Well, good evening and welcome to KTN Business. It has been an eventful day in the business world with the news of Chase Bank coming in, being placed under receivership. And the soundness of Kenya's banking sector is perhaps the talk for most Kenyans this evening. With news of Chase Bank being put under receivership, the Kenya Bankers Association has maintained that all was not lost in the financial sector. The CBK Governor, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, has equally voiced his concerns of a financial system that is in dire need of compliance to the rule of law. Yes, we, I, we hear that. We do see um, the pain that... Uh, people that do not have access to their resources will go through. Um, there's no denying it. But in that sense, we still need, this is why you need a sort of a, an unbiased regulator who will look at the interest of all uh, without fear or favor. So what happened here? First, there was uh, something like uh, $8.7 that was um, there wasn't sufficient evidence that this can be recovered. We, we as, as an association, try to um, ensure that uh, our members um, uh, you know, act responsibly. They, uh, they, 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 they are ethical and uh, they are acting in the best interest of the consumer. Mm -hmm. Um, even though we do not have um, a regulatory or a supervisory mandate, we try to ensure that our members are acting responsibly and in the best interests of the consumer. So well, Halbi Olaka there, the CEO of Kenya Bankers Association. Of course, a number of words have been thrown regarding the recent developments in the banking industries, words such as receivership. So join me on our Super Bowl this night to tell you just a little bit in brief what this whole aspect around receivership means. It technically means that uh, the governor of the central bank will be, has actually opted to place a bank under a management that is protected by the law. Receivership is an alternative to filing for bankruptcy that may be a better option for some businesses facing hard times. So after a bank has been placed under receivership, what happens next? So when a business cannot meet its financial obligations, it is said to be insolvent and drastic measures may be necessary. So after a bank has been placed under receivership, the next big question of course is what are some of the benefits of receivership but before we talk about the benefits of receivership what is a receiving manager a corporation assigned to oversee an insolvent business and has more flexibility than a trustee appointed by the regulators so the receiver manager is sort of someone who is actually unbiased and will be keen on being independent and getting to the bottom of the truth and giving the CBK the appropriate recommendations. So these are some of the benefits of receivership compared to when a bank opts to take another route which involves going to the court. So the first benefit is paperwork and fewer court proceedings required. The next big advantage is the flexibility of receivership is it actually allows a bank to develop a strategy that might not be permissible under bankruptcy rules. So that's just a quick look at some of these key terminologies. I want to finish off with what is a bank run? We've seen a number of um, he headlines coming out that uh, Kenya is likely to face a bank run, especially with what's been happening on social media. So a bank run is so simply a large number of customers withdrawing cash from deposit accounts with a financial institution at the same time because they believe that the financial institution might become insolvent. So in simple terms, it's when customers rush to withdraw money from a bank that eventually causes a bank run. So the importance of a receiver manager is to ensure that we don't have a situation where we have a bank run where most customers panic and the first thing you do is rush to the bank and withdraw all your money. So that's just a quick glimpse of some of the key terminologies. Of course, we continue to follow for you this story on the issue around Chase Bank, CBK being quite categorical, saying that they will continue cleaning up the sector. 
away from banking, let's change gears to ICT now. Telecommunication service providers will now be compelled to share up to 30% of new ICT infrastructure. The new requirement, which is likely to heighten competition in the lucrative sector, was published by the industry regulator, the Communications Authority of Kenya. It seeks to eliminate duplication of telecommunication infrastructure. The Kenya Information and Communications Infrastructure Sharing Regulations 2016 further restricts the deployment of passive infrastructure unless there is no feasible option of collation or where there is no option of infrastructure sharing with an existing infrastructure provider. This means that providers seeking to venture into frontier markets in the country will have to invest jointly in laying infrastructure like telecommunication, masts, ducts and physical sites among others. Well, and that's how we wrap up KTN Business. My name is Zabi Gina, And the big question right now is, which bank is next? I leave you with that as sports news comes up next. <laughs>